Minoru Furuya is one of Japan's most celebrated mangaka. His work over the decades has not only won critical acclaim, but has also become time-tested favorites and standouts within their genres. Sigotera, Ping Pong Club, Himizu, and his most recent work, Saltiness, all tell incredible tales that looks at the psychological state of characters who are usually on the outskirts of society. And while Saltiness continues that trend, I feel that it came up short in a lot of ways, and the subject matter felt just as aged and exhausted as the characters in this manga. We open with Takehiko, a 32-year-old man who is quite odd, to put it politely. He's very random with his speech and his actions, which have led him to becoming the town idiot. Rumors of him are abound, and this man-child has become a serious burden to his remaining family members, his grandfather and his younger sister. Feeling that he's keeping his sister, an elementary school teacher, from moving on with her life, getting married and having children, he decides to go to Tokyo to slay the beast known as life. Along the way, he meets Tanigawa, a homeless, recovering alcoholic who yells a lot. They trick a college student into shacking up and borrowing his cell phone. They take on odd jobs, extort various individuals, and have many conversations about the meaning of life, people's desires, and sacrificing your own happiness for loved ones. Of course, this is all seen through the lens of the mentally disturbed. Furuya makes it very clear to the reader that Takehiko is in dire need of clinical help. I don't know if I like saltiness. I know I didn't enjoy a lot of it, most of it in fact. I just feel very tired with Furuya's work. Most of his work does stand the test of time, but the endearingness of it, the rawness of it, only exists with his earlier releases. The repetitiveness really sets in when you notice that he does his typical tone shift halfway through. After two or three volumes, all of a sudden, we start seeing more characters being introduced, plenty of more fly-by-night cast members that join only to contribute for two or three chapters and then disappear. He does the annoying character yelling thing, that's so played out. There's nonsensical dialogue that's supposed to have a hint of intelligence behind it, but it just doesn't come off well. Also, the artwork in this series is really boring. I'm so surprised by how bland saltiness reads and looks. I really would have thought that Furuya would have put more effort into this because he's bringing back a lot of his earlier trademarks, the sort of humor that was seen in Ping Pong Club, back into this series. But it isn't really funny, it isn't really engaging, it's just dumb. Also, the female characters are the same as always. They don't look good, they don't say anything interesting, they're all enablers, they don't seem to have much sense at all. Sometimes Furuya is really good at having engaging females. There are other times when you don't even know who is speaking. You have to go back a few pages to look at the last name that was said or try and determine with the changing hairstyles who this character is supposed to be. All of the concerns I've had of his work in the past are just way too obvious here. I'm mostly critical towards the main characters though, and the way that they engage with one another. Takihiko is clearly schizophrenic. Why his family hasn't gotten him any medical help over the years is beyond me. I understand that Japan has a thing about shut-ins, but this guy isn't a shut-in. He talks to people. He wants to engage with people. He wants to figure out if he's asexual or not. He wants to figure out if he can create a life for himself that's independent of his sister. He wants to help his sister move on from being responsible for him and his grandfather. He has so many good points and he's able to work past his mental illness. However, Furuya never goes to interesting heights with this. For someone that has a debilitating mental issue, we don't see much growth from Takihiko. And the fact that this is a straight up comedy manga and it's not depressing like his previous works, you would expect some sort of resolution with the previous issues. And don't even get me started on Takihiko. Tanigawa, he really frustrates me. Every scene that he's in, it's ruined. I think the manga would have been insanely better without him. The reason why he sucks so much to me is because his style of humor is extremely similar to Takihiko's. He only offers this brand of humor whenever he's yelling. So why have two characters that execute their brand of humor like that? 
There's a part in the manga where we see a very serious conversation between Takehiko and another character who also struggles with a form of social ineptness. And the banter between them shapes up to be one of the more thought-provoking parts of the manga thus far. Then, fucking Tanigawa just comes around the corner and starts yelling, derailing the atmosphere completely. Why did Furuya do this? Leaning so heavily on such a weak character that steals and ruins every scene that he's in, that's so terrible. I think the main story behind saltiness lies within the enabling that people give to their loved ones instead of giving them the cold, hard truth. There's no reason why Takihiko couldn't have gotten help over the years. There's no reason why he needed to be a shut-in. His sister grew up in the same environment as him, and yet she was able to make something great out of her life. Even towards the end of the manga, we don't see Takihiko become more responsible when it comes to work, when it comes to educating himself, when it comes to building a relationship with a woman, and his family members around him, while they do point out when he's wrong, and they do basically beg him to move on from his obsession with his sister and to do something with his own life, they always seem to pull back whenever he starts spouting some philosophical bullshit, and it makes the reader wonder, what the hell is the point of this story when every single batch of conflict is extinguished before we get to see anything of substance ignite? I'm not big on this series. It feels as if Furuya has softened as he's gotten older. The format of this series, four to six volumes long, is no longer something that he excels at. Saltiness is his most recent work, and if Furuya ever makes a return to manga, I hope we can see him move on from what we all know him for. The man is a pioneer of modern slice of life and seinen. Him not being recognized in the West is a result of none of his works being made available to North American readers until 2022. Hopefully, he'll get more shine and release something new within the next few years. I have a feeling that his opus has yet to be written, and I would feel very disappointed as a manga fan if he ended his career on the flat note that is saltiness. 5 out of 10.